Hey everyone, how's it going? This week I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, medical transition stuff for trans people. There are a lot, there's a lot of stuff out there, like a whole lot. And I am not a qualified medical professional, so please don't take anything I'm saying as advice. I've done research, but I'm not an expert. So talk to your doctor if you want to know more details and stuff. Also, I'm going to be talking about things really in a lot of like binary ways. It's just Unfortunately, it's easier to talk about things in terms of like trans men and trans women, assuming that trans men were designated female at birth and trans women were designated male at birth. That is not always the case. A lot of non-binary individuals can go through the same medical transition processes, um, but I just do not have time. So I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully we'll do more in-depth stuff later, but this consider this an overview, a very an overview. In the past, the traditional order of medical transition stuff has been hormones, then top surgery, then bottom surgery. Nowadays, it's much more flexible depending on who you talk to. Um, I've known people who have done top surgery first, then hormones. Totally cool. Um, it may be more difficult to find an understanding therapist or doctor, but it is possible. So if we're going to start in the traditional way, we'll start with hormones. That's hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy, HRT. For trans men, they're is testosterone. Testosterone is pretty straightforward. There's a vial of testosterone, person injects it into their leg, and then magic. It makes the beard grow, it makes the voice get really deep, rearranges fat on the body, increases muscle mass. For trans women it's just more complicated. Um, it's not just estrogen, there's estrogen, there's progesterone, and there's also antiandrogens, which basically block the body's like processing of testosterone so it doesn't affect it doesn't affect trans women anymore because here's the thing facial hair lower voice all that stuff those are permanent changes so trans women will often but not always go through some sort of like vocal therapy to like raise their voices they will often do some sort of laser hair, laser hair removal to get rid of the beards they don't have to shave not always the case but that's that's sort of a thing so antiandrogens will stop that from from happening more than it already has um, and then estrogen and progesterone, those, the main one is fat redistribution and especially will lead to like breast growth, which is kind of nice. Estrogen, I have often heard is taken in pill form, but there are also injections, patches, gels, the usual mix. Moving on to top surgery. For trans women, it's breast augmentation, breast enlargement. For cis women who get breast enlargement, it's the exact same process. Slit, put the silicone thing in to make the breast look larger. Bam, done very straightforward. For trans men, it's slightly more complicated, but not ridiculous. Uh, it's breast removal or a mastectomy. Basically, they just cut open either a large incision or they do a small keyhole incision if, if someone's breasts are, are much smaller. They remove all the fat and the breast tissue, and then they just sew it all right back up again. Oftentimes, this also comes with areolar reconstruction, which is a fancy way for saying they cut the nipples off of somebody's body, trim them so they're smaller and more masculine, and then they sew them right back on again. For bottom surgery, for trans men, there are a lot of things that may happen. There are internal surgeries, there's hysterectomy, oophorectomy, or ophorectomy, where the uterus and the ovaries are removed. This stops the body's production of estrogen, which often means a lower testosterone dose, but not necessarily. After that, some trans men will go for a uh, vaginectomy, the removal of the vagina. Then there are two options for constructing a penis, if that is what someone wishes to do. There's metoidioplasty, or meta for short, and then there's a phalloplasty. Metoidioplasty is cheaper, there's a little less risk involved. Um, oftentimes, people who have a meta will have full sensation in their new penis, which is great. For phalloplasty, it is more expensive, there is greater risk. Oftentimes, sensation is lost, which sucks, but it is generally larger and more realistic. Looks more like a traditional penis than a metoidioplasty does. For both of those, there is the option to have what I've heard called as urethral rerouting, where doctors will take the urethra and they will move it so it goes through the new penis that trans people can, speak, can pee standing up now, which is pretty cool. For trans women, it is a bit more straightforward. There is the penectomy, the removal of the penis, or chiectomy? I probably got it wrong. Um, this is the removal of the testicles. And then there is the vaginoplasty, which is the creation of a vagina. The method that has gotten the most press for vaginoplasty 
in the past has been the penile inversion method, where they take the penis and turn it inside out and create a vagina out of that. It is obviously much more complicated. This is also not the only method. There are a lot of methods for um, vaginoplasty. There are many and varied. I cannot go into all of them here because I do not know enough about them. Um, I know there are some that involve skin craft, skin grafts. It's, oh, it's so complicated. I don't know this stuff as well as I should, I guess, to be making a video on it. If you're curious about this stuff, I recommend you do your own research because there is a lot of stuff out there. These are not the only ways to do it. These are not the only things people do. They do not always do them in this order. Maybe people don't want them. That's all totally cool. It's very complicated and very personal. And I do feel bad for not talking about non-binary individuals, but that is on such a case-by-case -case basis that I just, I just can't do it in a short amount of time. This is already a long video. I hope you learned something. Probably didn't answer any questions, but again, if you have questions, you can leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.